Maybe we're a little late to the game, but Arturias Drum Brute Impact, I'm deeming a modern classic, and that's why we're addressing it two, two and a half years after its release. Let's take a look and a listen. Stick around. Hello, Internet. Chris Klein here with Alma Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. And as I stated in the opening, today we're going to look at Arturia's Drum Brute Impact. It's going to be a brief look. We're going to listen to sounds, a little bit of the sequencing, some of the functionality, its playability. But before we move into that, I would like to ask that you please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We also have other channels that are centered around pianos, drums, accordion, bass. We've got channels for everything. There's going to be more, I can guarantee you. Um, so let's go ahead and just jump right into this and let's listen to how it sounds, how we can manipulate the individual drum sounds, how easy it is to sequence, and how we can manipulate the sequences in real time on the fly. Here's the Drum Brute Impact, and this drum machine has so many features packed into it, it's so playable, and by playable, I mean from like a performance standpoint, where some drum machines aren't super, um, they're not super friendly if you wanna do things on the fly. Uh, this will allow you to do all kinds of things, and there's also other functionality that will create more randomness into your patterns or individual tracks. So you, there's all kinds of things you can do with the Drum Brute Impact. We're gonna get into the meat of it. We're not probably not gonna cover every single thing, but we're gonna, we're gonna do quite a bit. And I want you to hear what this thing sounds like because it's really a beautiful sounding drum machine. It is analog and then you have the FM drum, 10 sounds total, super flexible, multiple outputs in the back for kick, snare, FM drum, hi-hat, and then everything else comes out the main output. Uh, distortion, you can, color the sound, there's, again, so much you can do. I love all the randomization features and being able to repeat things as well. It's just very performance friendly. But let's listen to what it sounds like. So we have our kick, snare, snare two or clap, tom high, tom low, cymbal cowbell, closed hat, open hat, and then the FM drum. Now the kick drum, of course we can adjust the decay so we can get it to be really, really stabby and punchy, or we can go into more of like an 808 style zone. And I know I just said 808. Everybody wants to have an 808 or a 909, 707, whatever the classic drum machine is. This is definitely a new classic. This is a, a modern classic. It sounds different. It, it, it's just a cool drum machine. So I'm gonna try not to make those comparisons too much so you don't get locked into that because it doesn't sound like an 808. It doesn't sound like a 909. It doesn't sound like anything that Roland has made or Korg has made or Electron. This machine stands on its own and it, it really has unique flavors. So let's go back to the kick drum. So again, we can change the pitch. Get really, really low. and then the level, which of course all these potentiometers or knobs become your mixer for the drum machine. Now we move into the snare. We can change the decay, the tone or the snap, and once again the level. Snare two or our clap, You can really hear the, the filter sweeping. There's just a filter attached to this. So we change the decay. Now for those of you that have seen me do keyboard videos, I'm not the best keyboard player. I am, however, a drummer. The drums are my main instrument. So I might, I might get a little more crazy with this. So kick, snare one, snare two. Then we have our tom high, tom high, tom low. And we can still adjust the pitch for each one. Then they come to our symbol. Change the decay. 
And then we have our level, once again, or cowbell. And in that case, as you can see, as I adjust symbol decay, well, it does nothing to it. So then we have our hi-hat. We can change the tone. And then we have our open hi-hat. We can change the decay, our level. And then we have the FM drum, and the FM drum to me is such a cool bonus on here because it gives you so many different colors. You have the mod pitch, the FM amount, the decay, the carrier pitch. Turn the FM amount way up. Carrier pitch down. So it's just an added flavor that we haven't really heard on a lot of other drum machines. <clears throat> now, as we get into sequencing and song mode and banks and everything else, the sequencer has 64 patterns of the, the 64 steps for each pattern. You can accent individual tracks or individual drums separate from the other drums instead of the accent affecting everything that's happening on that hit. It's a very, very robust uh, sequencer that's incorporated into this. So let's go ahead and play with this. We're not going to try to sequence anything that's more than 16 steps, or really eight steps for that matter. Um, so let's go ahead and let's sequence something. Uh, we do have a metronome which is nice, 16 steps, excuse me, uh, which is really, really nice. And we can control the level of that because I'd much rather play something than pattern sequence. So here we go. Just a very simple beat. Okay, now here's where it becomes very, very interesting. We can actually randomize our pattern, the entire pattern, by turning up the random knob. Let's go ahead and turn the metronome off now. Pretty nice. Okay, we also can repeat steps, quarter, eighth, sixteenth, and thirty-second. And as you can tell, the randomization is still incorporated into the repeat. Turn that back down. Get back into record. Now we can also add distortion to the output circuit. Turn that off. We can also add color to different drums too.
tons of fun, easy to get around on, so many different options. And again, we're not gonna get into everything, but I just wanna give you a really quick overview of how flexible and easy this drum machine is to manipulate. Because, let's, like, let's select a track, for instance. And we're gonna go ahead and just randomize that one track. So now we're randomizing the kick and the snare. Everything else is just as I programmed it. Turn the snare back down. Go back to our kick, turn that back down. Turn off current track. And let's go ahead and turn up randomization once again. And let's bring up our swing as well. And now we're going into like new jack swing territory for those of you that are familiar with that term and going into the early to mid 90s. Think uh, like Belle Bib DeVoe and, and groups like that. It, it's so easy, again, like I can't stress enough how quickly you can get around this machine and do so much with it. It's one of my favorite drum machines in the whole universe at this point. And once again, this is a new classic. And I know people are gonna argue down below in the comments, and that's fine, We're, we can all express our opinions, but super powerful, tons of fun. If you've got the coin, buy one, because you're gonna have too much fun with it. You can also sync to other types of clock. The MIDI will also take DIN sync. Again, powerful. Too much power, especially for the price. At $349, everybody should have one. No, not every, let's not everybody get one. Scratch that. Don't do that. Let's be individuals. <laughs> it's super powerful. Go to your music store, local music store. If you're in San Antonio, come by Alamo. Ask to see one of these and have fun with it. And again, we could get deeper, but we're not going to. You understand how this thing works, how it sounds, how easy it is to program, how easy it is to tweak uh, your patterns, and how easy it is to uh, do other performance-oriented things with it, uh, options. It's feature-packed. Do it, we're done with this for today. And there you have it. I know it was brief, but you have an idea of how it sounds, how easy it is to play and program. And that's really what I wanted to show you today because I think we need to hear more, I don't think, I know that we need to hear more of this in productions. Uh, you know, I've been trying to pick it out in certain things and I don't know that I've really heard it being used yet in any productions. I also don't listen to a lot of current uh, top 40 or uh, radio pop friendly songs. I'm more of a weird electronic indie person, lots of jazz. Uh, but I, I would like to know if it's been used yet and who's, who's used it successfully. Uh, I hope that you got something out of this. I want to hear your comments down below or see and read your comments down below. I guess I can hear them in my head with fake voices that I make up for you. Um, again, let's keep it nice in the comments. Let's be constructive. Let's, let's, you know, criticisms are great, but we can do it in, again, in a constructive way. Um, let's talk about how we might use this, uh, uh, how it might best be incorporated into different types of production, whether it be house music or just standard techno or breakcore or glitch or whatever it is that you're doing. I want to know more. Um, so until next time, as I always say, be kind to each other. Keep on creating. Let's, let's, let's inject a little more kindness into the world because it, it certainly needs it. I'm Chris Klein. You can also find me at civilianaudio.com. Uh, once again, we're at my music center and uh, looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.